I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you received me in your, in your homes, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me, and in prison and you visited me. The righteous will then answer him, when, Lord, did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we ever see you a stranger and welcome you into our homes, or naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will reply, I tell you, whenever you did this for one of the least important of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. Okay, this is Mark 7, 31 through 37. Yeah, 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 and I'll we'll help you out. Jesus then left the neighborhood of Tyre and went on through Sidon <laughs> to Lake something. Galilee. <laughs> going by way of the territory of the ten towns, some people brought him a man who was deaf and could hardly speak, and they begged Jesus to place his hands on him. So Jesus took him off alone, away from the crowd, put his fingers in the man's ear, spat and touched the man's tongue. Then Jesus looked up to heaven, gave a deep groan, and then said to the man, Ephaphatham. No. <laughs> <laughs> which means open up at once the man was able to hear his speech impediment was removed and then Jesus ordered the people n not to speak of it to anyone but the more he ordered them not to the more they spoke and all who heard were com completely amazed how well he does everything, they exclaimed. He, he even causes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. My friends, you were chosen to be free, so don't use your freedom as an excuse to do anything you want. Use it as an opportunity to serve each other with love. All that the law says can be summed up in the command to love others as much as you love yourself. But if you keep attacking each other like wild animals, you'd better watch out or you'll destroy yourselves. Thank you. Anyway. But the question I had was, what do good friends do together? And I've sort of answered that already. And it's this acronym we've been using that we begin with prayer, we pray for one another, we listen with care to one another, we eat together, we serve, and we share stories. And uh, that's what good friends do together. And one of the things that our Bible story t told us about Jesus going to serve a man in, 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 the, in the Decapolis, the, the ten cities, because one of the questions we have is, who do we show neighbourly love to? Who do we show friendship to? Is it just those who are part of our family? Or is it just those who are closest to us, the people that we like? And in this story from Mark chapter 7, we see Jesus going to some unusual places. He went from Galilee, where he spent most of his time in Galilee, and in Judea, and in Jerusalem. But he goes to these far north places, like um, Tyre and Sidon. And while he was up there, he healed a Gentile woman whose daughter was, had an evil spirit, was giving her trouble. And in the den, ten cities with Decapolis, he heals a deaf mute. These are sort of far-flung areas of, of the Jewish nation. So if you can see the map, the map says a little, actually I think I've got a dot here, let's see how I can do this. Can you see it? This is Tyre, so Sidon's just north of this. And um, Damascus is part of the ten cities there. Uh, where's Philadelphia? Philadelphia, that's, if you go to Jordan, that's the modern day Amman, the capital city of Jordan. So these are cities on the right hand side of the river, Jordan, the river Jordan. And um, so Tyre and Sidon is the extreme north of the area that God first gave to Israel. 
and promised to, promised to Abraham and the ten cities are in the extreme west. So there's Jesus going to the furthest extent possible to share the love of God and to proclaim the gospel, not just to his own family and friends. And the theme of our services has been about how we, how we love our neighbours, but the neighbours are not just those who are closest to us as family or those living right next door, but the people that we meet and the people that we encounter through the day who need to know the love of God and, through, and share the experience of Jesus. So, we, so the question is, who do we serve? We serve anyone we meet. And Jesus went to these extreme places because there was people who needed love and care, people who needed to hear the gospel. The ten cities were probably Gentiles, and, but there was a scattering of Jews living in the area. And uh, I think he went for peace and quiet. But wherever he went, because of his heart of compassion and love for people, he served them. And you, you see that in these two stories from Mark chapter 7. So how does Jesus serve? Well, I think Jesus serves by example, first of all, doesn't he? There's that wonderful story about washing the disciples' feet. He said, this is an example. I've set you an example, he says, of how leaders should lead by serving one another, by washing their feet. And the miracles are also ways of helping people. When, when they were hungry, he fed them. When there was a storm in the boat, he calmed the sea. When people were sick and needed help, then he, he cured them or set them free from evil spirits. So Jesus gave an example of, of a life lived in service to others, doing, asking the question, what can I do to help? He said I, he knew the power of God and so he could see the power of God at work. But Jesus also helped by teaching. And so there's a wonderful story in, when the disciples were asking who is the greatest. And Jesus said the servant of all must be the, the one who wants to be first must be the servant of all. And so Jesus' teaching talks about that. And we had that in Mark 10, 45, how he came to, to give his life a ransom for many. We have Jesus teaching on the parable of the sheep and goats, which we also had read this morning. Um, when you did it for the least of these, you did it for me. Again, that encouragement to serve and to put others first and to do the little things that, that matter. Ultimately, Jesus served us by dying for us on the cross. Greater love has no person than this, and they lay down their life for their friends. Or as Jesus says in Mark 10, 45, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. That's the ultimate demonstration of God's love for us, isn't it? His death for us, his giving himself for us. In the story we have from um, Mark chapter 7 about Jesus healing the deaf man, there's an interesting thing. There, uh, there's six actions before Jesus speaks, before, before he speaks a single word to this man. And so the first thing you notice is he took, took him off alone. You wonder, why did Jesus take off the man? Some of this man's friends helped him, served him by bringing him to Jesus. That's, that's a great way to help, isn't it, to, by bringing someone to Jesus. But then Jesus took the man off alone. Because I guess that man must have spent a lot of time if he had a speech impediment or he couldn't hear. You say, if you're like me when you can't hear, so he keeps asking, what, what are you saying? Say that again. And you ask those kind of questions. But if he stuttered or if he couldn't speak clearly, um, then he would have been mocked and scorned, especially if it was like a teenager's kids would give him a hard time. And his friends would have scoffed and mocked at him. So Jesus took him off privately, privately and gave him their respect. We see from the story, there were three actions there that Jesus put his fingers in the man's ear, he spat and touched the man's tongue. Jesus is actually kind of using sign language for a deaf person, isn't he? By putting his fingers in the ear, he's saying, I'm going to open your ears. By spitting, spit was a symbol of healing. So it's like your mother does, isn't it? If you, if you graze your knee, she spits on her hand or a napkin and wipes it. And somehow or other, there's, there's a magic, magic potion in that spit. And so they, they kind of understood that back in the day too, of Jesus' day, that spit was a symbolized with healing. So by putting his fingers in the ears, he's going to open your ears. By spitting, he's going to bring healing. By touching the man's tongue, he's going to loosen his tongue. So there's these, these actions that Jesus used to communicate with him in, in a way that he could understand. Then Jesus looked up to heaven. You think, well, why does it put that Jesus looked up to heaven? It's such a minute little detail, isn't it? But again, it's kind of saying oh, he's, he's going to ask God for his healing. And then the next one, he gave a deep groan. You think, fancy putting in the fact that Jesus did, to Jesus sighed. But again, what, what does a groan mean? Maybe it means that he's, he feels the pain of this man's life. He feels the pain of his hardship. And he's trying to say to that, I feel for you. I'm looking to God to, to bring healing. I feel for you. Uh, and, and then he brings the healing and he speaks that word. And John, brilliant John, was saying that, well done in the reading. That was very good. 
I think you just, we'll just say the English word open up, because it's so much simpler than the Greek. But it's, isn't, it, isn't it amazing that there were six actions before one word in the healing of this man? Six, six actions of service to communicate with him, to show that he was loved, to show that he was had dignity, to show that he was a person of worth, to show that he was going to be, be looking to God for healing in this way. And I think that's, that's the amazing thing is, about this is that, that how, we say, how does Jesus serve? Jesus serves in such a way that brings dignity. One of the things that's easy to do is, is, is to serve in such a way that somebody feels belittled. So they say, oh, I'm here to help you, but you're just a stupid, useless idiot. And you can't do anything by yourselves. And you can't, you, 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 I know you're weak and feeble, and you can't do it, but I'll, let me help you. There's, there's, there's that way of sort of patronizing, condescending kind of healing, helping. Well, it's like Jesus who serves with dignity. And I think that's one of the things that stood out for me in this story is that the way that when Jesus cares, he cares with, with dignity. People can say that in their words, don't they? They're back in the comments. You're not, as, you're not as bad as I thought you might be. You know, it's kind of implying they thought you were going to be useless, but that you're, only, you're only moderately bad, not completely bad. Well, that's a nice outfit for you, isn't it? Saying you, your clothes are normally scruffy, but for you, that's not too bad. Or, or say, thank you, for your, thank you for your idea, but let's get back to reality. Again, there's little ways of taking away a person's dignity. Jesus wants us to help one another and serve in a way that brings respect and dignity to the people that we serve and kindness and compassion. I think the other thing that stood out for me in this story is, is the sense of empathy that Jesus had with the story. The way that he used those non verbal langu language cues to communicate to this man. He understood what it's like to be mocked. He understood what it's like to not be able to communicate and to understand what's going on. And life must have been a bit of a whirl if you, if you couldn't hear and understand if people trying to explain what's going on. So have you ever been to the doctors and the doctor's doing things and suddenly you think, what's going on? I don't understand this process. And you feel like you're just being poked and prodded and you don't know why. And a good doctor will explain that and show empathy to, you, to your situation and help you understand what's going on. And Jesus showed that with this story. We can communicate empathy with our words, can't we? We can say, I, can, I can't fully understand what you're going through, but I care about you and I support you in what you're doing. I know it's, we can say, I sound like you're being overwhelmed. Is there a way that I can help you? If there's any way, I, I will do it. Oh, I believe in you, and I believe in your strength to get through this, even though it feels impossible at the moment. We use our words to show that sense of empathy as well as our actions. The other thing that Jesus serves, he serves with dignity, he serves with empathy, but I think he also serves with excellence. He does all things well. The opposite of excellence is mediocrity, or inferior, badly, or ordinary, or average, or even crummy. We've had a few experiences of ordinary or crummy or, or very average sort of tradesmen come to our house in the last few weeks. We've been doing a few jobs around the place and we had a plumber um, came and did something with, with the um, dishwashing machine. And, but, but when the plumber finished after, after a few days, it wasn't working. You know, they, they, we called up the tradesmen and said, the dishwasher's not working, we don't know why. And um, so, the, so we got the, the dishwasher tradesman to come around and he said actually the plumbers plugged the hot water tap into the cold water tap and the cold water into the hot water. And so the, tap, so the, the thing wasn't working. So it cost me $100 just for the plumber to swap the taps around. We also had two other jobs needed to be done in the last week or two. We've got a guy coming to grind up some stumps on the ground because we had a few trees cut down and we were sort of rearranging the garden a little bit. And um, we're also getting a, a, a concrete pad put down for the car so that it can be off the road, but not on the grass. And so we said to the concrete pad people, don't come on Friday because the tree guy is coming. Well, at eight o'clock, there was somebody there. I thought, oh, that's good, the tree guy is nice and early. But actually it was the concrete guy with a concrete, mix, co concrete mixer full of concrete. And I thought, well, I can't send him away because the what is he going to do with a truckload of concrete? And I said to the, to the other guy, we said, well, maybe he could get around the back to get, it, to get in and grind the stumps, but he couldn't, so he'd have to come another day. But you sort of think, it's a sort of a reasonable level of incompetence in some of these people, isn't it? Where they just can't listen to, we told them clearly that the tree guy was coming to do the stumps, and there they were on the same day to do that. But the opposite of doing things incompetently or badly is to do them well. 
And one of the things that the Bible story says, Jesus did all things well. And I think as we see that, I think the, the quality of his work is this, says that he did, he did an amazing miracle, the healing of a blind and deaf man. But he also did it with dignity and with empathy. And uh, those, are the, those are what came, resulted in that statement that he did all things well. One of the questions that, that, that asks us is, when we do things, do we do it, what do our actions communicate? If someone asks you to sweep the leaves up off, off the outside of the church or do the vacuum cleaning, do you do it well or do you do it the minimum job? And what do our actions communicate about our love for the church or for the people that we're helping? Um, do they show a sense of dignity, empathy and excellence? One of the things that Jesus is serving also points to, to is something more. In Mark 7, 37, it says these words, they were completely, uh, completely amazed. He even causes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And one of the things that points to is a, a, a particular passage from Isaiah 35. It's called a messianic passage. It's one of the passages that predicts the coming of the Messiah, the Saviour, the one who fulfilled the hopes and dreams of Israel. And it says in Isaiah 35, verses 4 to 6, God is coming to your rescue. The blind will be able to see, the deaf will hear, the lame will leap and dance, and those who cannot speak will shout for joy. And I wondered whether in Isaiah 35, I think those are, are parables or metaphors, but there's Jesus fulfilling it literally, isn't it? That the blind are see, see the deaf hear, the, the lame leap, and, and those who cannot speak shout for joy. So again, these passages are saying that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who fulfills the hopes and dreams of the people of Israel. So they, 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 his service pointed to something more. And I think our service also points to something more. It points to the God who we honour through our actions. Our service points to the, to the one who inspires us, Jesus. One of the things, chapter 7 is followed by chapter 8, obviously enough, and in chapter 8... It, um, it's quite a pivotal chapter in Mark's Gospel. So in chapter 8 we have this wonderful verse, Who do you say I am? said Peter. And, and as they reflected on all the things that Jesus had done and the way that he did them, they said, Peter was the first to announce that you are the Messiah. So the way that Jesus served, the things that he did, led to this conclusion that you are the Messiah. And straight after that Jesus begins to teach the, that he was going to suffer and die. And so if between chapters... Uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10, there's three times Jesus predicts his death. And in chapter 10 is the verse that we read with, with the kids, where it fulfills that. It says, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Well, the big question is then, what can we do to help? Well, Jesus prayed for us. We can pray for others. If Jesus listened to us, we can listen to others. If Jesus served us, Jesus ate meals with people, we can eat meals with them. If Jesus served us, we can serve him. If Jesus shared stories, so we can share stories, our story of, of what God means to us, our story of what God has done in our lives, our story of the scriptures as we tell them stories that might bring hope and peace to their lives. This is how he loved one of the things I was thinking about yesterday, so Friday I went to see Charlie, I heard it in the afternoon that Charlie McLean had died and so I thought I'd go around and see Sarah. And uh, so I went around to their little flat and uh, it was interesting being there after he'd just been passed away just less than 24 hours. And, and they live in a, one of the Masonic villages and so several people from the village came in to talk to them and to share stories with them. I, I like the man who said, I, I, I don't like to, t I won't sit down and talk because I said, I don't know what to say, but I've just come to say, I, I'm here for you. If there's anything I can do, let me know. I thought, what a great way of serving, isn't it? To say, A, a he was present, and B, he said, I, if there's anything I can do. Another man came with a bunch of flowers, and another couple came and again said, what can we do? Can we help in any way? And uh, they talked about things where they could do, and they talked about their friendship with Charlie over the years. So they shared stories. And as they, as they remembered his life and the, and the fun and laughter that he had. And these are all the ways to bring comfort. Your presence, your sh praying, your prayers, your listening, your, your sharing food, and your serving. And, and all these things help to make a difference to a person's life when they're going through hard times. It was nice to see that, that their community was surrounding them, and, and I was there for the church. One of the big questions we could ask people is, we should always be asking ourselves, is, what can I do to help? 
What can I do to help when you've got a book fear? What can I do to help when, you, when you've got a neighbour who's going through a difficult time? What can I do to help when someone's going through a hard time? Is it just listening? Is it prayer? Is it hospitality? Is it service in some ways to make life a bit easier? When you talk to people in the church, you hear about people going through all sorts of challenging things. You think, if they had to do this alone, it would be really difficult. But we don't have to do it alone, do we? We do it with the support and love of one another. And one of the things we should be doing more is serving one another and being open, as the song said. You know, may, the, may, may, brother, let me see, be your, let me be as Christ you. Pray that I might let you be the one who helps me, as you help me too. Finally, our last little verse that says from Galatians, which we had read as well. It says, love is the, is the motivation. Let love make you serve one another. And that's why we do things with dignity, with empathy, and with excellence. It's about love, isn't it? We don't do it just because we have to, because we're obliged to help. We do it because we are loving our neighbor. We do it because we're loving our, our friends. We love our family, we love our God, we love our church. And Galatians 5 says, the whole law is summed up in this one commandment, to love your neighbour as yourself. It's interesting that Galatians chooses that one, isn't it? When Jesus said, what is the greatest commandment? He said, it's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, and to love your neighbour as yourself. But in Galatians it says, the whole law is summed up in that one verse, to love your neighbour as yourself. A challenging thing, that we might live out our life as, uh, of Christian faith by serving one another and caring and doing what we can to make a difference. Let us pray. Well, we know that we ought to serve, but sometimes we, we would rather be served. Well, we know that we ought to put out the needs of others before ourselves. We need to humble ourselves and just do the tasks that need to be done. Well, we find this hard. Help us to be servants to make a difference in the lives of others through our words and through our actions and especially through our service and our practical help of one another. Lord, make us like you. Thank you for the way that Jesus served us. He demonstrated that compassion, that kindness, that friendship, that love. Thank you that he came and died on the cross for us. Thank you that he rose again so that we might have eternal life. Lord Jesus knew we needed forgiveness. Jesus knew we needed hope, so fill us with your forgiveness and hope. Help us to trust fully in Jesus and to follow his example by believing in him, by following him, by making him Lord of our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.